OK, so I just wanted to carry this whole thing on with a look at a few more details of the FBXing um, in Lightwave and so forth. Uh, one thing I just wanted to draw your attention to quickly is these little black joints um, that you see on the end of my FBX setup rig. Okay. Uh, the reason for these is basically they become dummy joints. You see, for instance, you've got your you know, right toe end here, which would normally be the last joint in the chain there, but I've created a right toe end two joint. I've got that again, and the head end, and the tips of each of the fingers, and so on and so forth. What happens, you see, when you import an FBX into Lightwave, as I have here, um, with the same skeleton just re-imported from the FBX file, is there's a little bug in Lightwave's FBX importer, Valkyrie, um, which causes it to duplicate the last joint in the chain. Um, and, of course, it gets Lightwave's index naming. So, you see, what you get um, is left toe end brackets one and left toe end brackets two. That final joint gets deleted and its parent joint becomes duplicated, um, which is a little bit annoying, but not a big deal if you've got the dummy joints set in as I have. If I hadn't, then of course what would happen is the left toe end would be deleted and the left toe base would be duplicated. The result of this is that when you go to load from scene and merge motion envelopes, the names in the hierarchy wouldn't match exactly Exactly. And the effect of that is that any rotation on this head joint here, on the last of the finger joints, and also, of course, on these toe joints here, um, would not copy over when you merge motion envelopes. So those would remain static, um, and that's a, um, an issue. So the dummy joints are just to circumnavigate that little problem. So you don't need to worry about them. They are additional joints that are ignored by, you know, Motion Builder and so on and so forth, and they just help you to get around this little bug seamlessly. You don't have to do anything at all. Now, whilst I'm talking about that whole load from scene mo motion envelopes thing, uh, I just wanted to point this out as well, because a couple of folks have gotten caught on this. If we look at our scene editor, um, and we see the hierarchy that we have, right? We have, you know, the mesh, the child of that is the hips, the left up leg, right up leg, you know, each of those hierarchies and so on and so forth. Merge motion envelopes when loading from scene um, doesn't just need matched names, it also needs a matched hierarchy. So if I look here at a scene I've brought in after putting motion on in Motion Builder, you see that you get this FBX bone hierarchy stand-in thing going on. So even though the actual, you know, hierarchies of the the, the, the bones, the joints themselves match, this top bit of the hierarchy doesn't. What Merge Motion Envelopes does is it starts at the top and it works down the hierarchy and as soon as something stops matching in the hierarchy, it no longer loads the motion onto anything below that. So if these item names at the top of the hierarchy, these parent items are wrong, then of course when you come to merge over to here, then none of the joints below will actually have their motions merged correctly. The simple way to do that, of course, is just to correct your hierarchy. So I've got this null object here, which is the parent of all of the, um, all of the joints there. So I'm just going to parent that off to the scene. I'm going to clear everything else out here, all of these FBX coordinate conversion do that's get rid of all of that, yes to all, yes to all. And then, of course, I need that name to be the same, so what I'm simply going to do is I'm just going to replace with object and replace it with the same mesh item that I've got, you know, here on the scene that I'm going to load the motion envelopes onto. So there you've got man mesh, all of the joints underneath it. Here you've got man mesh, all of the joints underneath it. And that's great. So when we save that to the load from scene and choose merge only motion envelopes, then, of course, it all works out. Um, and so that's if you get any little problems with the merge motion envelopes, that helps explain that all the way for you. And of course, the toe end too here, you see there's no keyframes applied to it, and the same with the toe end. Um, neither of which, of course, need keyframes. It's just as long as there was keys on the, on the base, which we can see here there are. And so our dummy joints have got us around that little problem. So there we go. Just those couple of little things, because a few folks have been confused about that, so that clears that up nicely for you. Okay, so coming on and on to the next thing, which is, of course, going to be Lightwave 10. Now, there's some great news in Lightwave 10, um, principally the fact that absolutely nothing is different. The procedure is exactly the same as it was for Lightwave 9.6, except there are a couple of um, additions that I'll come to. Um, but so far as we're using this rig, the rig that I've posted up there for you all to download, um, there is absolutely no difference at all. So we have our, our guy here. Um, we go File, Export, Export FBX, which, of course, uses the value 
Valkyrie exporter. You've got your FBX versions that you can choose here, the 2011, 2010, whatever. And out you export it under some sort of a name, so Lightwave 10 FBX will do for me. And there you go, you pop it open in Motion Builder. Um, you know, and the procedure's exactly the same. Obviously, the procedure in Motion Builder is going to be no different. You characterize it, you stick your motion on it, plot it down to the skeleton. So there you have it, there's our, you know, motion. Um, so you, of course, plot that down to the skeleton, um, and you go and you export it. Now, one thing with Lightwave 10 importer of FBX, um, you don't just want to save your scene, you do want to export it, and here's the reason why. We just give that a name, in this case, Fall. The Lightwave 10 FBX importer doesn't like it when you've got multiple takes on an FBX file. Um, so you only want the take that has got the plotted animation on it. In that case, this is take 001, as you can see I was using right there. Um, so we just export that take. Back in Lightwave, we just choose load scene and our FBX file, and there we go. Our FBX motion is loaded in, just like it did on the last time. We follow the exact same procedure for correcting our hierarchy here. So, of course, the FBX bone hierarchy stand in, we replace. So, as the name is the same. Incidentally, I don't have to replace that um, with the mesh, which I did before. I just do that for quickness. You could just rename it as long as it's the same name as the um, appropriate mesh. We, of course, save our scene, bring back up our regular Lightwave rigged version, do the load from scene on it, merge motion envelopes, and happy days, it all works out. Everything's grand, and that's all there is to it. So the process for Lightwave 10 is pretty much exactly the same as we've already seen for 9.6. So that's all good. But there are a couple of other little things that take place within the Lightwave 10 FBX importer that I just want to draw your attention to. These are issues that we haven't come across because of the way that this rig, you know, this FBX skeleton of mine um, is set and works and so on and so forth and the way it exchanges nice and cleanly with Motion Builder. Um, but there are other little tricks, so let me just point those out to you now. The first thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to bring in an FBX motion. This is a motion file just from the Motion Builder examples, okay, um, which is the H smash Hulk smash um, motion. Let me just wind that up a bit. There we go, so we can see what's going on. Okay, and as we can see, everything, you know, it, it looks good. It looks great. No problems there. Okay, um, but let's take a closer little peek. Here. Let's grab his hips joint. Okay, um, nothing wrong with that. You know, rotation, all looks good, etc., etc. But let's bring up its motion options. Notice this. YZX, uh, sorry, ZYX rotation order um, motion modifier has been added to it. This is a new motion modifier that's been added in Lightwave 10. Um, rotation order converter um, is what it's called. And this is to deal with the offset that you get between rotation order um, in other packages, Maya, Motion Builder, whatever, um, and the way that it is in Lightwave. Okay, you remember that, you know, back at the beginning, when I pointed out the way that the joint skeleton was set up, that was accounted for by having the hip joint at 90 minus 90. Um, you can see here that with that applied there, look at what my rotation values look like. If I uncheck it, you see, you get a different result, but by doing so, look what happens to our... Um, our motion. Oh, it's going all, it's slipping around and, and flying about all through the place. It's like some crazy, crazy thing is happening. Um, there you go. That is because of the different rotation orders. If we turn that back on, rotation order is, you know, fixed again. And there we go. It all seems to work. Now, why did this not pop up beforehand um, when I was just doing the transfer? The reason is because of the way that I used my FBX rig, exported it out of 10, did it in Motion Builder, brought it back in. The 90 minus 90 trick held exactly the same. Lightwave 10's Valkyrie importer recognized that, and so it didn't apply this thing here. Okay? Um, it only applies this to basically FBXs that haven't been spat out of Lightwave in the first place. It only does it to raw FBXs coming in. In fact, if we bring our full FBX back in, you know, the one that we just exported from Motion Builder there, we can see quite clearly that the hips do not have this modifier applied, okay? Neither does the FBX bone hierarchy stand in null, and neither does the man mesh um, original null. But of course, that is the hierarchy 
This is the, the, the joint hierarchy that was originally exported from Lightwave. Don't forget that when you do that and send it to Motion Builder and you come back to Lightwave, you get this as well, a hierarchy of nulls, the control reference um, hierarchy. And if we look at that, look, you can see that has got the ZYX rotation order conversion on it because this is something that has been generated in Motion Builder and has been brought into Lightwave. In this case, it adds it on. But the original rig, the original hierarchy that came out of Lightwave and has now come back in, doesn't have it applied. Because of that, I think that the cleanest way to go from Lightwave to Motion Builder and back to Lightwave again is to stick with this 90 0 minus 90 rig that I've set up and provided there because you don't have to worry about any of this um, mess that can sometimes be caused with the change in rotation order. If, however, you do bring in something from an FBX and it does come in and use these rotation order conversions on it, then what you would do in order to be able to make sure that that merges properly with the FBX rig in Lightwave is you would simply go along through each of the joints, add the rotation order converter modifier and set it to change to ZYX. Okay, and by doing that, and of course putting this same motion modifier on every bone in the hierarchy, putting it on every single joint, um, then by doing that you can allow yourself to take something raw in in FBX and match it to something done in Lightwave and it will work. So that's how that whole little thing works.